Armored Core 6 has an excellent combat system. It's fast, fluid, three-dimensional, and overall just difficult enough to be fun without having the extremely punishing difficulty of other FromSoft titles like Elden Ring. And one of the core features of Armored Core's combat system is ACS Strain. This refers to your Armored Core's control system. In short, ACS, the Attitude Control System, is what lets you fly your mech around at super high speeds, dodge bullets, and all that fun stuff. But it's also what gets you stunned, stuck in midair, or staggered when it's overloaded. You're unable to move, you can't fire weapons, and you certainly can't avoid enemy attacks. So in short, you want to inflict this status on bosses as much as possible, but you don't want to inflict it on you. And in today's video, I'm going to break down how to do both of those things. If you like learning about Armored Core 6, other action RPG or ARPG adjacent titles, or just generally hearing my thoughts on games, then do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, and for now, let's get into the video. First up, you keep track of your ACS strain using the bar above your energy. Think of light yellow as happy, orange as angry, and red means your Armored Core has reached its limit. You're now staggered and bad things are about to happen. Similarly, the bar above enemies' heads tracks their strain. And by the way, you deal higher damage to the staggered enemies, so building up ACS strain is a very important part of killing things efficiently. There are two stats that govern your ACS strain. Attitude stability determines your maximum strain, and this generally scales with how heavy your armored core is. So bigger, heavier, tankier armored cores not only have more health, but they have higher attitude stability, meaning they are less likely to be stunned. But on the other hand, your attitude recovery determines the length of a stun. So while a big heavy AC might be quite likely to not be stunned, when it is staggered, that stagger lasts a long time. Whereas a light mech with high attitude recovery is able to snap out of it much more quickly, preferably before the enemy's done serious damage. So in short, if you want to avoid stuns, think of a heavier chassis like tetrapod or tank treads. Try dodging with a quick boost, or alternatively, don't worry about getting stunned, but make sure you're light enough to have high attitude recovery so you can recover from it quickly. That last one is my favorite go-to because I like the mobility that comes with lighter armored cores. But on the other hand, let's say you want to do the staggering. How do you inflict more ACS strain on your enemies? First up, there's the impact stat. This is the ACS strain that's inflicted immediately when the weapon lands a hit, but it resets after a short amount of time. This is great if your hit immediately stun locks an enemy, but otherwise is unlikely to fully stagger them. An example of a weapon that inflicts a lot of impact is the laser blade. On the other hand, there is also a cumulative impact. This type of ACS strain only dissipates after you avoid damage for several seconds. Weapons with high accumulative impact use consecutive hits to stun an enemy. So for example, the missile launchers made by Furlong Dynamics specialize in inflicting accumulative impact and therefore can fully stun like a boss by chipping away at it over several rounds. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, when you're fully staggered, you take more damage. This is true for enemies as well. And that is governed by the direct hit adjustment stat. When an enemy is staggered, you inflict direct hits. And this applies the Direct Hit Adjustment Damage Multiplier. You can also go into your OS tuning and apply a few of the chips you won in the arena to further enhance this stat. Use Direct Hits, particularly with your more powerful heavy weapons, to take out stunned ACs or massively chunk boss health. So when it comes to working ACS Strain into your build, there's two main approaches. The first is to use multiple weapons with high impact and high damage to instantly stun an enemy like I'm doing here with the Sea Spider. The advantage of this is you're going to be able to guarantee that you stun something on command. The disadvantage is most of your powerful weapons are now expended and might not come online before the stun ends. Therefore, you are less likely to take advantage of the direct hit damage bonus. This also has the unfortunate side effect of not working very well against highly mobile enemies. Alternatively, you can use weapons with high accumulative impact to build up to the stagger. The advantage here is because you're doing it over time, if you miss a single rotation, it's not the end of the world, and you can save a high damage weapon, like let's just save a laser, songbirds, or stun needle, to then capitalize on it by punishing the enemy with a massive direct hit. 
But the disadvantage here is you're going to be playing a little bit more defensively. You need to learn boss patterns and dodge for attacks, because otherwise you could find yourself on the short end of a stun, and that's not going to be very good. Remember, bosses do get that direct hit damage bonus. And so, for example, a couple of setups that I used a lot throughout my playthrough. The first was pretty much just stun the enemy and nuke them. I used dual songbirds, either the laser blade or pulse blade, and in my other hand I had whatever light weapon that I could use to do chip damage on bosses and take out smaller enemies like MTs. I found this setup to be highly effective against the larger, slower, and less mobile foes in Armored Core 6. After all, they couldn't really run away and dodge my songbirds, and those things do a massive amount of damage. Plus, melee weapons are very good and have a fairly reasonable direct hit multiplier. The problem is you usually can't land blows when the enemy is dodging around. So you stagger them, get the hits in, and you're good to go. Alternatively, the other setup that I liked a lot, especially on the faster and more mobile enemies towards the end of the game, was dual missile launchers for my handheld weapons and dual stun needles for my back-mounted weapons. This setup is all about capitalizing on absolutely massive direct hits. I can use the stun needles to set up and stagger an enemy. Or alternatively, I can chip away at them with both the missile launchers, firing left, right, left, right, with a little bit of a pause in between. Then, the minute I see that enemy bar turn red, I fire both stun needles, taking advantage of their significant direct hit damage bonus. And this is the setup that I used against some of the fast, agile, and deadly units in Armored Core 6, including the Ibis Battle. But these are far from the only viable options. I've heard that many people, in fact, prefer shotguns, and other people prefer to make their ship a walking missile launcher. And so I'm curious, what are some of your favorite weapon combos in Armored Core 6? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see one of my favorite fights from Armored Core 6, then check out my video on how I encountered the Balteus, got a little bit stuck, and then overcame the challenge. Link to that will be up in the card and down in the description. I'd say the Balteus was the most fun for me because that was the first major struggle point I encountered with the game. But the coolest visually would have to be the Ibis, because who doesn't want to fight Millennia Blade of Laser Missiles? And the absolutely most satisfying fight was the final fight of the game, because it wrapped up the entire narrative in a really poignant manner. But I'll leave talking about the endings to a potential future video. And of course, if you liked the video or found the guide helpful, then do be sure to leave a like on your way. Now, before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. And you might even see your name on screen just like these fine folks here. With that said, thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you again sometime soon.